Assalamu alaikum and welcome back once again to today in African history with Baba Shaka. I'm Baba Shaka and today is June 17, 2021 and we have just moved into the second half of the self-proclaimed International African Scientist and Inventors Month. Today, let's learn about the man who is largely responsible for the modern kitchen. John Stannard was born on June 15, 1868, and was an African inventor from Newark, New Jersey, who patented improvements on the refrigerator and the oil stove. Overcoming racial segregation in the United States at the time, Mr. Stannard revolutionized the modern kitchen and was granted intellectual property rights to two patents throughout his lifetime. In many references, his name is spelled Standard, S-T-A-N-D-A-R-D, but there is no question that the correct spelling for his name is Stannard, S-T-A-N-A-R-D, as that is how he spelt it on his patent documents. Now, little is known about Stannard's life, but his two patent applications, which were both granted, survive, including detailed drawings of his patented inventions. Stannard was born on June 15, 1868 in Newark, New Jersey, to Mary and Joseph Stannard. Now, although there is not much known about his early life, Stannard's improvements to kitchen appliances eventually led to more innovations in both refrigerator and stove designs that would change the way people around the world stored and cooked their foods. Stannard is commonly attributed with creating the first ever refrigerator, but the patent issued on June 14, 1891 for his invention, which is U.S. patent number 455891, was a utility patent, which is only issued for an quote-unquote improvement on an existing patent. Throughout his career, Stannard defied the racial norms of his time by delving into scientific pursuits and research into cooling devices and stove construction, an area that was usually very limited to the African community. Though little is known about Stannard's life specifically, he lived and worked in an era and in a place, Newark, New Jersey, in the late 1880s and early 1890s, where life for African people was difficult. See, after the Civil War, many African people had migrated from the South to New Jersey, where they tended to live in, in cities. New Jersey at the time boasted a large African community with black service clubs, Black-owned businesses, and at least 12 Black-owned newspapers, according to Giles R. Wright in Afro-Americans in New Jersey, A Short History, which was published by the New Jersey Historical Commission, a state government agency. Most African people in Newark and throughout the state faced economic and racial repression, Wright added. Quote, the masses of the race continue to occupy the lower rungs of the occupational ladder. Black urban males tended to be laborers, delivery men, janitors, porters, teamsters, chauffeurs, waiters, and servants. Women were heavily employed as laundresses, dressmakers, and domestic servants. The prejudice of the white employer and, the, and employees combined to exclude blacks from factory works and skill crafts, unquote. Wright said that comments such as this one from a report of the New Jersey Bureau of Statistics of Labor and Industries was typical. Quote, their color and lower instincts made them unde undesirable associates of white men, unquote. Now, with such a pattern of prejudice and discrimination existing in the cities of 1880s New Jersey, it is all the more remarkable that Standard was able to design a new configuration for the refrigerator and oil stoves that would be the standard for the millions of units of the appliances sold in the coming decades. In his patent for the refrigerator, Stannard declared, quote, this invention relates to improvements in the refrigerators and it consists of certain novel arrangements and combination of parts, unquote. Mr. Stannard was trying to say that he had found a way to improve the design of refrigerators, a non-electrical and unpowered design. Mr. Stannard's refrigerator made in 1891, used a manually filled ice chamber for chilling and was granted a patent on June 14, 1891. 
Mr. Stanner did not invent the refrigerator itself. Vapor compression or the liquefying of gases, which was an important step towards the development of the modern refrigerator. As others had taken those important steps decades before Mr. Stanner received his patent, what Mr. Stanner created was a manually filled ice chamber that was separate from the main refrigerator unit. The ice filled chamber was located on the left bottom corner, uh, corner area of the unit, while the main refrigerator section was to the right. He introduced air ducts or holes to help cold air circulate from the ice chamber into the main refrigerator. The cold air and cold drip was passed from the ice chamber to the refrigerator through cold air ducts and perforations, ensuring that a constant circulation of air is maintained through the several chambers and the water for drinking purposes in the receptacle is always kept cool, unquote. Mr. Stannard wrote in his patent application. Years later, others commented on the originality and usefulness of Mr. Stannard's invention. Quote, one of the clever features of Mr. Stannard's refrigerator was the provision of cold, clean water from a tap on the front of the device. Unquote. And this is noted by 3D Warehouse, a website owned by Trimble Incorporated, a Sunnyvale, California-based hardware, software, and services technology company. A couple of years later, or a couple of years earlier, I should say, a couple of years earlier, Mr. Stannard had also worked on innovations to improve the home kitchen, and his 1889 oil stove was a space-saving design that he suggested could be used for buffet-style meals on trains. He received U.S. patent number 413689 for this improvement on the Stannard stovetop on October 29th, 1889. As Mr. Stannard described his oil stove improvement, quote, the herein described invention consists in certain improvements in that class of oil stove used more particularly in places where space is limited, as for instance, in buffet cars, etc. The object being to furnish attachment for such stoves which will enable the cooking of a great variety of meats and vegetables, etc., at the same time. Okay. Now, generations of caterers and patrons of wedding receptions, meetings, parties, and buffets where food is served hot in portable catering stove have Jay Stanner to thank for the fundamental design. Now, as with his life, little is known about Mr. Stanner's death. He died in 1900, which would have made him 31 or 32 years old at the time. The basic idea of having a quote-unquote freezer separate from the main refrigerator unit was his, though the freezer and the refrigerator were not yet electric at the time. Still, Stannis foreshadowed the millions of sports fans and TV watchers who would in later years rush to the fridge to grab a cold one between commercials. Mr. Stannis even mentioned cold alcoholic drinks in describing his device's benefit. Quote, the refrigerator chamber is adapted for use for bottles such as wine or liquor bottles over which the drip passes, keeping them perfectly cool, unquote. And the notion of catered buffets and events was also really Mr. Stanner's invention. As noted, he even mentioned the buffet as a perfect use for his modified oil stove, though he was referring to buffets on rail cars as trains were the major mode of passenger transportation in his largely pre-automobile era. These inventions and advancements were remarkable achievements. Mr. Stanner's work is even more impressive considering both the racism and discrimination experienced by African people at the time, as well as his short lifespan of little more than three decades. So from now on, whenever you stick your head in the refrigerator or stand in front of a buffet, Remember John Stannard and give him a little bit of appreciation for positively affecting your life. Oh, oh my, here's a cold one. Thank you, Mrs. Stannard. Mm -hmm. A very special thank you to all of our subscribers who continue to support our mission of bringing to you these daily lessons. For those of you who have not yet subscribed, please, we invite you to hit that subscribe button just below the screen there and lend us your much needed support. 
please like and leave a comment down in the comment section below. But most importantly, please share, especially with the young amongst us, because as you and I both know, this material is not taught in our schools. So, until tomorrow, inshallah, this is Baba Shaka with Today in African History. Masalah.